Good morning or good afternoon. Actually, it's afternoon already. Today I am going to make an actual raclette cheese, a raclette style cheese. I've already made a bastardized version where I didn't do the, the bee linens wash on the outside. And today I'm going to try to get better at bee linens and trying to figure out how to wash cheeses. I think it's time to up my game with this. The recipe calls for seven gallons. Can you even see me? Hi. Uh, milk and this is probably around six so it's gonna be smaller but I'm cool with that I'm just gonna like take off some of the surface paint and make butter it can be partially skimmed milk a lot of raclette cheeses are made from partially skimmed milk and I would skim this heavier if I had more milk but I don't have enough milk so I want it all to go into the cheese Urgh! Get, oh, there we go. I hate opening jars they're so hard that is just very basically skimmed milk. There's still a ton of fat in that. I could have gotten maybe twice this if I'd sc uh, skimmed it heavier. I think that's right around six gallons of milk. So I'm going to go do a little bit of research, get my proportions right, adjust the math and come back. And actually in the meantime, I'm gonna turn this on and let it start to heat. I think it needs to come up to 90. I'll come back and confirm all that. Hang on. All right, so you're supposed to heat it to 90 degrees. So I had it going for 10 minutes and then I shut it off. Get the piece of dirt out of the pot. So 75 degrees right now. So it comes up to 90 degrees and let's prep the yogurt and the buttermilk now while we have a hot second. When I was at Murray's Cheese Shop when I went to New York City, I bought not raclette cheese specifically, but this is a raclette style cheese. This is called Whitney Cheese. It's from Jasper Hill Farm. It's delicious. It is so good. And it has the pinkish, it's hard to see. I vacuum sealed it after I got it home and we tried it and everything because I couldn't eat it all right now, but you can see how there's like a pinkish rind to it. It's creamy and smooth and it's kind of soft. So it's just a nice slicing, melting, eating cheese. It was delicious. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for with my cheese. And I, I don't like to call it a raclette cheese because it's not raclette. It's just a cheese. Like, what do you call it? It's a, a bee linen washed, low temperature, mesophil well, mesophilic and thermophilic cultured cheese. So French based, I don't know. I don't know. This is why I get all stuck. So who knows what title you're going to see in the thumbnail or what I'm actually going to end up calling this cheese, but it's originating from raclette ideas, whatever. When I had done this with seven, about seven gallons of milk, I did a half cup of buttermilk and a half cup of yogurt as the cultures. I'm going to just stick with that. Like maybe I'll make it a little bit skimpy, but about the same. It's been 30 minutes. It's actually been a little bit more than 30 minutes because I wanted to have coffee and shortbread and enjoy myself. So I took a few extra minutes. But now it's time for the rennet. For seven gallons of milk, it calls for just a scant half teaspoon of rennet, which is hardly anything. So this is six gallons. I'm gonna do about three eighths. It worked just great the time before, so yay. One fourth teaspoon and then a half. Just a little bit more, like that. Dilute it with a little bit of water. 
Always put the lid on so you don't knock it over accidentally, as I want to do. See how the milk is beginning to slow just a little bit. I can feel it's just a little bit, a little bit of resistance. So now I'm gonna stop, it was only about 45 seconds probably. I'll leave it go for about 40 minutes till we get a clean break with the curd. So I'll check it at 40 and we'll see if it's ready to cut. It's still sloopy. See how that's a little bit soft? It doesn't quite hold up. I'm gonna give it another 15 minutes. See if it's better. Yes, look at that. See how it's rising up right like that? It's a much cleaner break. All right, first you just cut it into one inch columns. Letting it rest for five minutes just to heal. So now take the balloon whisk and cut it up. rest five minutes just to set up a little bit more. This is an unnecessary step. I could go with it, but I actually want to um, continue working on a project. So I'll be back in five minutes. So there's, there's two ways to cook these curds. The first way is for a drier cheese. I would just turn the heat on low and raise the temperature from 90 to 100 degrees over the course of 25 or 30 minutes. The second way to do it is to wash the curds by removing a quarter of the whey and then adding 140 degree water slowly, incrementally over the course of 30 minutes stirring and that's supposed to make it a moister, a more moist, sweet cheese. And then once you get to 100 degrees for either method, you're supposed to stir for an extra 15 minutes. The time I made it before, the cheese that I really liked, I just raised the temperature to 100 by doing the heat. That's what I'm going to do today because I like the texture of that cheese. I like how it turned out. But know that if you want to, you may do a washed curd cheese. Maybe I'll try that another time. Two versions of the raclette cheese. So I'm gonna turn this on and start cooking the curds. And I know the lighting is really bad. It's still middle of the afternoon, but it has been, there, is that better? It's such a dreary dark day, so it's really hard to see. So I'm just gonna stir this slowly um, for the next half hour. Okie dokie, it has now been 25 minutes and I'm at 100 degrees. These curds and whey feel different to me. They feel very small, but they feel good. They're not quite knitted together yet. And the, the whey has felt very milky. I don't know if this is normal or different. I always have questions about this. I don't even know what to say about it, except that it just felt like I'm not gonna have a very big cheese. I have a feeling this way would make incredible ricotta. I don't need ricotta, but if I did and wanted to cook it, I would make the ricotta and from the way, and you can look at that video, I'll post it right here, and you can click over to that and see how to make ricotta from whey. Right now I'm supposed to let it cook or just keep stirring it for another 15 minutes. It's only been 10 more minutes, but this is feeling done to me. The curds are very small. I've been doing the squeeze test. Get a little bit in here and then squeeze really hard. And it's staying together. I think this is probably done enough considering that it's a low temperature cheese. And yeah, I just don't think I need to go any further. So what I'm gonna do now is let this just set for five minutes. So the curds sink to the bottom and then we are going to pour off the whey. It goes to the pigs, I'm not making ricotta today. Then we'll get it into the press. Go slow because the curds are sitting to the bottom. You're splashing, you're splashing, you're really slow. Because you see that it's splashing out. Don't walk there y'all.
25 pounds for one hour. And there we go. It's only been about half an hour and I've pushed this down several times because it keeps like, as the curds sink, there's like a gap. So I keep pushing it down and keeping it right around 25, 30 pounds. But I'm gonna flip it now because I'm afraid it's not setting up evenly. This is supposed to stay warm and I'm like 85 degrees and it's cold in this house. It's not staying warm enough. Oh, it has that weird smell. I don't like the smell. It smells heavy and cloying. Oh well, maybe I'll switch it out at bedtime. It's a little bit slanty and uneven. So we're gonna to try to even this out. I'm pressing that at 40 pounds. I'll come back in about uh, an hour and flip it again. It's been another hour. That much whey has come off, so not very much. And now it is supposed to press for 12 hours. I'm actually going to do it longer because the house is cold and because I'm getting up at four in the morning and I don't want to flip it then or get it out of the press. This is breaking and you're gonna go fix it. And this has this weird kefir smell in this cloth and I hate the smell. So I'm going to get a new cloth because kefir is from the devil. Okay, maybe not, but it is pretty bad. And now it's flat. Can you fix it? How'd you fix it? Just tighten it up. Aw, so sweet. Well, it's the post-supper cleanup. That's why there's so much noise. Vacuuming and dishes. So 50 pounds, 12 hours, except it's gonna be more like 18. And then I'll put it in the brine. It's been pressing for nearly 24 hours. He said he fixed this, it's really bad. Six pounds, 15 ounces. So for a six gallon cheese, that's pretty good. It says to let this brine for 12 to 16 hours. 12 hours is three in the morning, so maybe like mid-morning or lunchtime, I'll take it out. So I'll probably flip it in the morning or not. I don't know, if you put salt on top of it right now, it's fine. You don't have to worry about flipping it necessarily. I just like to do it for continuity, but you can do what, what you want. Now, something about this recipe, I've been following this one in home cheese making. It says that once I get it out of the brine, I'm supposed to put it on it mat to air dry it for a couple days then you put it in an aging box so it stays humid and after two to three days it's supposed to start getting a little bit slimy a little bit of fruity smell and at that point you start washing it you're supposed to add bee linens to the the wash the first couple times i don't understand why it says it's going to be getting this fruity smell and get slimy in the aging box after a couple days because none of my other cheeses ever do and then i was reading the raclette recipe from this book and it says you're supposed to add the, a pinch of bee linens to the milk when you add the culture. And then you proceed with the recipe and then you do the wash later. So I am wondering if this raclette recipe has a typo because they didn't say to put the bee linens in the milk. It's only on the surface. And why would the surface of the cheese be getting the fruity smell when you haven't even done anything with bee linens yet? This raclette still might not be right if this is a typo in here, I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm gonna proceed as the recipe says, and we'll get to eventually to the washing stage, and maybe it will turn it into a raclette cheese, maybe it won't, we'll see. It is Wednesday afternoon, and it is time to get this cheese out of the brine. I was gonna flip it and thought about it, and then I didn't because I didn't. I had other things going on. It's 3.30 Wednesday, and I'm supposed to get it out like at noon, but a friend came over, and I was shopping, and all these things happened, and I didn't do it, so now, I'll do it. The raclette smells delicious and buttery. Just go take it out and we'll let that air dry. I'm gonna dump this back into the jar. Hello friends. I am getting ready to um, start the bee linen washes for this raclette cheese. I made it on Monday and it has been out of the brine and air drying all day yesterday. Today is Thursday. So it said to let it go for several days and it will get slimy and fruity. Well, there's no bee linens in it. So I think, uh, no, they're just not gonna get all slimy and fruity. So what they say then to do is once it gets slimy and fruity or once it's air dried like a regular cheese, then wash it with a light brine each day for 10 days. The first two washes 
are supposed to be done with the pinch of bee linens added to it. So here is my brine. It's one cup of water to one tablespoon of salt. And I used warm water because I wanted my salt to dissolve quickly. No, it's not really that warm. It's cold in here. I'm gonna be using this container to age it in and I do not have a wooden board. I think I, they're all in use right now. So I'm just sticking this, this little thing on the bottom, lift it up just a little bit. Here's the bee linens. I'm gonna take a pinch of them. This is my pinch. It's just an actual pinch. I'm gonna let it sit there for just a minute to soften up. Check this out. I did a whole other video on this, but I'm showing you now. This is a cheese that I just got out from Murray's Cheese Shop. It's called their Green Words Cheese. It's gooey on the inside. This is spruce wrapped. It's sticky and soft and it's ripe right now. So we were just eating this with potato chips. Gotta go check the shortbread. Making Christmas shortbread. Just gonna make it wet. Basically all I'm doing is wetting this. Okay, so this is going in. I'm gonna save this brine so I can do it tomorrow. I always put tape on the side and the top just because if the lids come off or things get mis mixed up, at least I know what the inside is. Then raclette, bee linen, and this is 12, 15. Wash with bee linen and then light brine wash. So I should be doing this every day for about 10 days. It's gonna have two times here, maybe three, and then I'll do a whole bunch and then we'll just let it keep aging. Here is the bee linen raclette cheese. Look how foggy it is. So today is 12, 16. I'm washing with the bee linens, just making a note of it there. And here's the bee linen jar. I'm gonna shake it up. It doesn't feel wet. It actually feels fairly dry. Wiping out the moisture. Don't think it's be too wet in here. Whoa. Okay, maybe that wasn't a good idea. This cheese is quite cold. That room is really, really cold. Rubbing these all over then slicking it off, off the excess again. And this is gonna go just straight down in and pop this back in the room. This is the third wash and I'm still gonna do it with the bee linens just to make sure I'm getting enough bee linens on this cheese because I want to. It's not nearly as wet in here as it was yesterday. It smells great, feels hard. A little bit of condensation on the bottom. I'm gonna toss this out now and I'll make a new light brine for the remaining seven washes. I skipped a couple days just because I wasn't thinking about it. It's looking good. It's smelling buttery and light. Very delicious. Doesn't feel clammy or wet. I'm just going to brine. This goes down, this is up. So I'm gonna just rub over this outside part here. Nothing is happening, so this feels kind of futile, but it's what the instructions say. frosted up because that downstairs bedroom is cold. It's like 10 degrees outside. This is so far looking totally clean. I wonder if that's what the salt brine is for. They didn't say, but maybe doing the salt brine keeps all the other mold off and that is what makes it then be like the pure pink color. I'll do both because it's not getting too wet like I was afraid it would. Merry Christmas! Mold. Yes, it's finally starting. I have not been washing it every day like I said I would because, I don't know, Christmas. It says you're supposed to wash it for 10 days. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I did seven, eight, nine. So only one more day and then I let it go. But as you can see, this cheese does not look like it's getting 
Well, it doesn't look pink to me. It doesn't feel sticky. There is a little bit of white mold developing on the top. It smells a little bit funky, but not like, not bad. So I'm just gonna wash it one more time with this. And I've been washing it all over each time. And the temperature in that room has been quite cold, more like 45, 50 most days, though it does pop up. So today is the final light brine wash. There's a little bit of condensation on the inside. I'll wipe that up. It smells like stinky feet. Yay, yay. And it's getting a little bit of this fuzzy mold is lifting up right here. It feels quite sticky. Well, not quite. Yeah, it does feel sticky. It feels like you're making a cheesy smear over it. Now for the next three to four months, this is supposed to just be aging at 55 degrees and I'm supposed to wash it twice a week. So I'll probably wash every Saturday, every Wednesday or thereabouts. I'll probably skip a week here and there, but just keep washing it with the light brine, one tablespoon of salt and one cup of cool water. It should develop that rosy hue and that funk. If I wash it too frequently, it can get a rind buildup, I heard, or too infrequently, it could crack, I don't know. And every time I wash it, I'm just gonna keep track of the date here and let this go. This is the end of December, so the end of March-ish, it might be ready to try. Here's the raclette cheese. I'm gonna do a light brine on it. It is very sticky, like my finger sticks to that. It's like, feels like I just touched tape. And I said it smells like stinky feet. It doesn't smell like stinky feet to me. It smells like those cheeses I got from Murray's, which is exciting. Well, listen, can you hear it? There's a little bit of grayish mold going on here. Oh yeah, you can hear my hand peeling away. When I wash my hands after touching the raclette cheese, it's like slippery and slimy. It's almost like they got butter on my hands and it takes a little while to get that, that sticky sliminess off. Be lemons at work. Ooh, it's gonna slide right on my hands. Oh, it's so slippery. It's super slippery. It's like a naked baby. It's almost like mucus. Oh, it smells much more stinky feet like. It's very sticky. It has like snotty stuff down here on the sides. Oh, it really stinks. It smells almost like sulfur, almost like eggs. There's a little bit of mold forming on it, but not much. Let's try it. Smack those up. This is just so pungent. This is exactly what it's supposed to be. And here's the reason, part of the reason that I'm afraid I'm in over my head with the other ones, because I am following directions exactly with this one and it is looking really, really good. And there's no extra mold. And so I think it makes a difference to follow directions. Who would have thunk? I think I might just flip this one today. Yeah. There's so much stickiness that I don't even think mold can live on this. I'm just going to keep doing its own thing. It's sticky enough and moist enough that I don't think we need to add more liquid to this. Ooh, smells nice and strong. A little bit of mold coming up here. So I'm getting that mold rubbed off a little bit there. And then, so let's, ooh, can you just pour a little bit on here again? Good. <laughs> super, super greasy. It's like... Okay. This one is my pet. If I wanted to get other bee linen cheeses going, I could smear my hands all over this. It is so sticky and slimy and then rub it all over the outside of another cheese. I don't have any I want to do that with right now, but I can totally see how you would use bee linens from one cheese to culture another cheese. At this point, I'm just flipping it. I see a little bit of white mold forming here, and I think I want that white mold to begin covering over this. That's my hunch. This week, I contacted Gavin Weber, and I asked him about this raclette. I said, it still has a couple months to go. It has a nice pink rind. It is very funky. It's firm. Do I need to backpack it, or can I just let this age indefinitely, like the full length of time, and just keep doing it? Or is there a problem that occurs if you do this too long? And he said, as you're salt washing it, the moisture will continue to be pulled from the cheese. So it will dry out on the inside 
potentially. He said, your rind can build up and get really thick. A clear sign it needs to be backpacked and if it begins to crack because it is getting dry. As I am continuing to uh, air dry and do a natural rind, inside proteolysis, I think that's what he calls it, continues to happen, which I think means that all the bacteria, the bee linens and everything else is continuing to do its work. And the cheese will go from being firmer where you can grate it, like you wanna be able to like slice or collect cheese and put it over potatoes and melt it, that type of a cheese, it will become more runny. And then you can't do that. So it just starts changing. So far this cheese is not drying out. It is still firm. It is very sticky. It is moist, like as a the outside part of it. So I'm not sure what to do, except taste it. It has this white mold on top. It's very slippery. There's like a yellowish color to it. It's firm. I don't see anything bad happening to it. It's definitely firmer as you get towards the middle, I think. Wow, it's beautiful, it's like a sunset. It is such a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Look at this. It is like, it smells really good inside. You're like, here, I'm talking to the camera and you, look at this. This is, this. What does it smell like? It smells like a vegetable and don't, don't touch it. But if you do, you have to wash your hands because it'll get sticky. It's like, almost like a slimy snot that gets, um, it's really hard to wash off. So I'm gonna break this open. Oh wow, it's really, really good. This is a good cheese. You want to taste it? Here, taste it, taste it, taste it. Don't cut your hand. Do you like that? Mm, mild. It's, it's really mild. It's a little bit tangy, but it doesn't taste at all stinky, right? Like you smell the outside, it smells. Do you smell the stinkiness when you came in the house? Your nose really doesn't work. It's really strong. This is what Papa Dry heaves over. Okay, it is true, it is true. Look at this. So if I'm pushing right here, it's harder. When you push right here, it's squishier. Can you see how the cheese bulges out there? So there it's firmer, there it's squishier, it's more rubbery. So this is actually continuing to go inward, which this is still soft enough that it will be sliceable. It's not going to not be gradable. It's not turning runny, but it's not as firm. So let's let it go for a couple more weeks. I'm gonna put it back in. It's kind of hard to go back in. Ah, it doesn't want to plug. What do I do? Just push it in? Yeah, I'm just gonna push it in. Use that cheese paste right there to glue it around. Go in. I'm gonna taste this. Oh, it's definitely creamier. Oh, that has some of the flavors of the Eastward I tasted from Murray's Cheese Shop. Ooh, I like it. It doesn't taste bad at all. We're gonna continue. Hoo-hoo, yay. Guess what, friends? We're gonna cut into the raclette today. I talked to Gavin Weber. Well, I didn't talk to him. I submitted the picture of my raclette cheese and the core sample and wrote him an email to share for his photo gallery that he does. And his comment was, why are you waiting? Go ahead and taste it. If the cheese tastes good and it looks ready, don't wait. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna cut into this thing today and we're going to have some raclette cheese. <laughs> I was just turning cheeses this morning. You can see these back here. This one up top is my Gouda that I just washed with an ale rub. I'm not filming this one. It was just a test on my own, but it has over time gotten sticky. It has bee linens in it. And I mentioned that to Gavin and he said, there's bee linens in the air and the environment just naturally. And so cheeses, if you're doing washed rinds, they will get that bee linen stickiness often just because of what's in the air. I think this one picked it up maybe more just because I have this raclette cheese going and there's probably some form of cross-contamination even though I wash my hands. It's in the air. I'm really excited about that one. So here it is. It has that broccoli smell that I talked about when I was tasting the Murray's cheeses, the Valencia cheese and a couple other ones, they have this broccoli vegetal smell, vegetal. And this one smells like that now. I've noticed it in the past couple weeks and it's intensifying. So it's less that stinky feet smell and more the vegetable smell. I'm not sure at what point that switched. So I don't know when you're doing raclette cheese, if you're supposed to do anything to the outside, I think you just let it go, just cut it. That's what I'm gonna do. Sticky, hear it? And there's the hole that I plugged back up. It's like there's this tan goop, and then there's the pink goop, and then there's like the white mold, and it's a little bit mottled on the side. This is exciting, this is so exciting. 
it's hard. Oh my goodness, it's really hard. I think I'm going crooked. Oh, look. Look at it, my baby. Look at that. Is that not the most gorgeous sight? Look at that. Yellow and more yellow, orange. It's just beautiful. It's firm. It's a little tiny bit soft, like a little bit feels almost like bouncy right there, but then it's firmer on the inside. Oh my. I think the mind which tastes fantastic. How in the world does it taste fantastic? It does. It's like all good flavors in your mouth and it smells like this. What? Oh, it's soft and creamy and it has this little bright sharpness, like a little bit of a tang, not in a lemony weird way, but like in a, just a bit of tang. So it's like that bit of orange, obviously. And then it's that part inside all these little lacy bits that are so good. Eating more of the rind. There's a little hit of like a little slick, like slimy, but not in a bad way. I don't think so. My family might disagree with me. I'm eating just the rind. There's a little bit of a grittiness at the very edge, like sand. Oops, I spit. That's outside edge, take it or leave it, it doesn't really matter. Like in food, it would just blend in. If you're gonna eat straight piece of cheese, maybe you take it off, I don't know. You know what we should do is melt it. Lots of cheeses are good for melting, obviously, but Raclette is known for it, so why don't we fry some up and see? <laughs> I don't know, but I just love that creamy, creamy look. Buttery, look how it bends and snaps. It's really quite lovely. Ooh, look at that melting. Ooh. Oh, it smells lovely. Oh my goodness. This cheese is amazing. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, hot. Mm, hot. Ouch. 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 Ha. Mm. Oh, that's splendid. Okay. Okay. I think there is something about Raclette being a melting cheese. That grittiness in the rind. It's all gone. So got the little hit of broccoli, that, that minerally flavor. I think that's minerally flavor. I think that's what they talk about. This is really good melting. Go try it now. What do you think about the flavor? Is it good? I don't think I've ever tasted it. It's an interesting flavor. I think we're on just some cheese. Hee <laughs> hee. So there's fried cheese. Oh, fried. <laughs> oh, you guys. Be jealous. Be very, very jealous. And then go make yourself a raclette cheese. Mmm. Oh man, it's like candy. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I gotta calm down. Come back down. This is so good, come back down. If you like Raclette cheese, if you learned something from this video, take a second and like it. This was like a project that took months and lots of research. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to put these in paper for now. Maybe I'll backpack a wedge or two just to see how it does. There's the little hole I put in, cut into it, and then there's the hole the rest of the way. 